Hi, this is Deb Rebar from Free Max Real Estate Center, and I'm very happy to bring you another edition of Know Your Home and Know Your Town. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Andrew Cornell from Liberty Mutual, and I'm just going to have him tell you a little bit about himself, and then we're going to go into the show and talk a little bit about insurance. I know probably not your favorite topic, but an extremely important one. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, Thanks for having me, Deb. Yeah, happy to have you here. And why don't you just start off, tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, why insurance? Why Liberty yeah. Mutual? Oh, in insurance is my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Andrew Corndell. Um, I grew up in Brockton. I uh, lived there for about uh, 10 to 12 years. And then uh, my family moved over to Easton. Mm -hmm. And then for the past about seven years, I've been living in uh, Norton with my beautiful wife. Um, and my little puppy, which not really a puppy anymore, he's about six years old, yep. uh, and we're actually expecting our first child on the way in May. So, oh, that's yeah. exciting. Nice little baby boy, so I'm very excited for it. Um, so how did I get in insurance? Um, to be honest with you, kind of fell into it. Um, mm -hmm. So I went to Bryant University, and you know, one of the big things about going to Bryant University is they say, okay, you know, you're going to graduate, you're going to have a job. Most of the graduates had a job. However, I was back around 2008, 2009 yep. when the market right. crashed. So what I did is I was actually proactive about it. I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to get myself a job. Uh, so my first semester, my senior year, I went out and I started looking for jobs. Um, I applied to a couple different positions, mm -hmm. you know, some with banks, some with uh, computer sales, some with phone technology, whatever it was. Right. And then my manager, who's still my manager now, actually offered me an internship. Uh, at the time, I was working as a writing consultant at Bryant making minimum wage. So yep. I said, all right, you know what, why don't I try this out? So I uh, accepted the position um, being a sales intern. When I was able to learn about the insurance business, I worked directly with the sales reps, making phone calls, uh, processing paper, pushing paper, and everything like that. Um, throughout my first semester of my senior year and then into winter break. Um, winter break, I actually accepted a position um, selling phone systems out in Connecticut. That following, fr that was on a Tuesday. That following Friday, my manager brought me out to lunch. She mm -hmm. offered me the job at Liberty. Oh, that was so. Awesome. <laughs> I sat there and I had a conversation with my dad, and I said, "Dad, you know what? I got. I already accepted this job on Connecticut. I was excited about it. However, I just got a job offer at Liberty." And he said, "Okay, we'll weigh the benefits. I would have had to relocate all the way out to Connecticut." Yep set up shop, make an apartment, and do a job that I had no idea how to do. And then he said, on the other side of the spectrum, you've been doing, you've been working at Liberty for the past six months. Mm -hmm. You live five minutes from home, you know, so why don't you give this a go? That was the second best decision I made in my life. First, obviously, marrying my wife. Good answer, Andrew. <laughs> yep. And then the second, working for Liberty. Uh, in May 2010, I actually started my career at Liberty. Um, I won Countrywide Rookie of the Year meaning that I was the top producing rookie uh, at for Liberty Mutual in the entire country. Since then, I went on to win Liberty Elite uh, twice in my career, which is comprised of the top 1% of sales reps in Liberty. Mm -hmm. And the rest is uh, history, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, I know you're a little modest, but what, you rank third in the country with the company? Uh, yes, yeah. as of last year. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, which is awesome. And don't, you know, I know you're a little shy, not necessarily shy, but, you know, modest about your accolades, but, y you know, you should be proud of them because, I, you know, we do a lot of business together and I refer a lot of my clients and my family members to you and yeah. I see firsthand why you have those awards. Yeah, so. I mean, one of the things too, my motto is just treat everyone like they're your own friends and family yeah. members. Yeah. Um, that's how I treat my customers and, you know, it ends up paying back. I have a great team that backs me up too uh, and, you know, I sell for a great company. So. Yeah. No, nope, and it shows in what you do, so, which is why I'm comfortable referring my clients and my family and friends to you. So, Appreciate yeah, welcome it. to the show. Let's get to it. All right. All right. Now you might say, okay, I'm okay with paying the first 10% of the claim, and then the insurance company pick up the rest. In her scenario, that's not the case. So a wind hail deductible of 10% is 10% of her dwelling coverage A, which was at $250,000. So she had a $25,000 deductible. So if a tree blew down on her house, she would be responsible for first 25000 um, Situations like this, um, you always see in Massachusetts, everyone thinks that glass is automatically included. Mm -hmm. But with a lot of the national, uh, prior to 2008, used to be regulated market. No right. matter where you went, it was all the same prices. In 2008, they deregulated the market. And that's when you saw a lot of influx of additional carriers come into the mass market. 
they, it's still regulated, but they loosened it up a little bit. Um, and what happens now is a lot of carriers are actually putting a glass deductible on there. I came across a coverage page the other day that had a thousand dollar glass deductible. Thousand dollars. It doesn't. Typical mm. cost of a windshield is like two hundred bucks. Right. So, it's it's one of those things where, as a consumer, you think you have the coverage, but it's kind of like a, a pillow, and you're going, oh wait, it's not working because you don't have the coverage. Because the deductible is um, so high. Yeah. Yep. They'll never pay out. Um, so unfortunately, you know. I'm a consumer at the end of the day, just like you, right? And just like all my consumers, um, price is definitely important to me. Uh, however, you get what you pay for, um, right. and you know, with choosing a local agent or someone to review your policy every couple of years, it might be worth that extra, you know, ten, mm -hmm. fifteen dollars, because you do have someone. If something happened, you can walk into their office and say, "What were you thinking?" Instead right. of picking up a one eight hundred number and then waiting on hold for half an hour. Right. Right. So, so you know, good examples of knowing the. The local age. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, definitely. You know, we don't live on the coast and, yep. you know, uh, we don't get a lot of wind and hail, but we've had some freaky storms lately. So, yeah, you, you know, should it's have good a, to know what your coverage is. Yeah, you should have an all perils deductible, um, meaning all perils, all losses, mm -hmm. a flat deductible. Uh, typically, I recommend about a $1,000 deductible for home insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I recommend that is because, just like car insurance, when you get in an accident, immediately people want to say, Hey, you know what, let me try to pay it out of my pocket because they don't want their insurance rates to go up. Um, same, similar to home insurance where if you do have a claim, uh, you lose your claims free forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't use your insurance, but when the power goes out and you know, you have food spoilage and the insurance right. company is going to cut you a check for a hundred bucks, maybe not the best idea to use it, but when you do have that tree that falls down on your right. deck and it costs, you know, four or five, six thousand dollars to get it fixed, then yeah, use your insurance. Right. Um, so a deductible, it's, it shouldn't be a, um, insurance should be a blessing, not a curse. Right. So you want to use, um, you want to use the insurance for those more um, costly repairs right. than the small ones, just like car insurance. So on the, you know, the, I'll say accident forgiveness, because that's the phrase that's coming yeah. to mind because of car insurance and all the commercials that are out there, but you know, similar on home insurance, um, homeowners insurance, is there a time period, you know, you, I get in a car accident, Yep. I use it, does it ever come back? Yeah, so it is a five-year roll-off, um, so claims do save what you for five years, similar to surcharges, uh, okay. speeding tickets, accidents. Um, one of the advantages is there's a lot of companies, you know, for example, mm -hmm. Liberty Mutual, we offer mm -hmm. accident forgiveness, Right. Uh, meaning if you were to get in an accident, um, and you did qualify, meaning if you were to get in an accident, the price of your policy wouldn't go up due to that accident. Okay, and um, similar similarity in homeowner's insurance? Yeah, I mean, we do a similar program on that one, um, and, the, and the reasons why we do that is because, once again, you know, you pay all this money into insurance, mm -hmm. why should you be penalized for using it? Right. I could see if you use it four or five times, but, right. you know, right. if you use it once and you're... Right, and most people don't at least the people I know make one probably claim the whole yeah. time they live in a house exactly, and yeah. you know that's it so yeah. um, something just came to my mind and I just lost it Crap. Um, so I know when we were talking um, the other day about you know a lot of times you said when your clients you say you know how much does home insurance mm -hmm. cost and what are the factors based off of it um, so with home insurance is um, you know 2008 was a, a weird a weird year. Yeah. Um, they used to just say, you know, hey, how much, Deb, how much do you pay for your house? Mm -hmm. You would say X amount, and that's how much they insure your house for. However, what you got to consider is that um, that purchase price takes into consideration the land and the foundation. Right. Both of which are not going to be impacted on the total loss. Um, so, insurance companies partner with a company called MSB. Mm -hmm. um, it's zip code specific mm -hmm. to actually come up with cost to rebuild your house. So, right. when you're going through, if your agent just comes up with a dwelling amount figure, mm -hmm. you should question them and say, well, you didn't ask me anything about my house. Right. Because I don't know if you have carpet. I don't know if you have hardwood right. floors, granite countertops. Um, town assessor, they pull the information from town assessors' databases. Mm -hmm. However, they might not be updated. Right. Exactly. Because people don't, you know, let's face it, don't yeah. always bring, oh, yeah. do things the right way. You yeah. should do things the right way, but they don't always. Yeah. Um, you reminded me of what I wanted to ask. You know, one of the things I provide for my clients or I started doing in recent years is after they've been in their home a couple of years, I provide them with an updated market value. And I, we were talking about this the other day. I have a client who all of a sudden I, I realized she has $100,000 
in equity from where she paid for the house. You know, which is why I provide that to my clients so they know where they are. Um, and she was shocked. And, you know, she's not selling, but she's, I'm like, you need to call your insurance person. I mean, how often should people be looking at that? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> typically, uh, you know, I always say every couple of years mm -hmm. at least, um, right. call up your agent. But when life events happen, you know, what I mean by life events mm -hmm. is I mean when you have a baby, you yeah. know, or you upside, you know, you buy a house. Um, a lot of people just think that, you know, they think tunnel vision. They say, okay, I bought a house. I just need to look at my home insurance. However, you should probably look at your auto insurance too. Right. Because the limits of liability that you had beforehand might not be enough. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. so everyone's too happy nowadays, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, um, so you want to make sure that you have adequate coverage on the auto insurance as yeah. well. So I would say every couple of years, um, and it, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't take that much, you know. And, or when you're buying something new, like if you're buying a car and you're calling your agent, you know, don't just say, hey, I'm buying a car, hey, sub substitute the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm buying a car. Can you take a look at it? Is there anything that we should change? Most agents, the good agents like myself, mm -hmm. we actually are proactive about it. So we'll call out on our customers. Uh, we'll make sure that they're, you know, they're everything's protected and they, you know, have all the discounts and everything applicable to mm -hmm. their policy. But more importantly, make sure that their coverage is updated because right. you never know. You know, one of the things I come across and do in what I'm doing, and it always. Um, you know, com difficult conversations I have to have with my clients is, well, you know, I want to buy this house and I don't think permits were pulled or, you know, I want to do an improvement, it, but I don't want to pull a permit, which again, I don't recommend. For, <laughs> um, you know, I, how does that, you know, if something happens. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the big things that um, we do come across with insurance is uh, knob and tube wiring. Yeah. Um, from an insurance standpoint, it's very dangerous, um, right. and it should be something that you know does does get cleared. Um, knob and tube wiring. Basically, what they did is back in the day, they thought yeah. it was <laughs> great to have open circuits that just spark a flame right. underneath in in between the walls underneath the floors. Right. Uh, obviously, presents the likelihood of for fire damage. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why you want to pull, uh, have permits when you do this work, especially replacing knob and tube wiring, is because when you're selling a house you're not going to walk in there and say, well, I know there's no knob and tube wiring because you're not going to tear down the wall. Right. So you don't know. So you as a consumer don't know that. So it's very important to have all these permits updated because of the fact when you go to sell your house um, and you say, no, I removed all the knob and tube wiring, they're going to ask you, well, where's the permit with it? Well, I didn't pull a permit. Right. I wouldn't buy that house because right. how can you trust exactly. it? Exactly. And you can, there can be issues with getting policies too. Oh, yeah, you yeah. yeah. Knob we and know. tube is a is a big concern with insurance yeah, and it's you know, very difficult. Because there was a uh, questionnaire that whether you're a new home buyer or switching over or renewing yep. that, and that's one of the questions, yeah, you know, yep. age of roof, I forget what it's on there, but you know, what, what is the um, comp insurance company looking at it, that questionnaire, you know, depending yeah, on, I know there's a series of questions. Yeah, um, with an insurance company, uh, when the agent asks those questions, um, it's basically helping us qualify the risk. Uh, mm -hmm. Underwriting the risk, charging the right premium so that if we do have a loss, we can pay out for it. Okay. Um, age of roof, we typically look at, you know, asphalt shingle roofs, 20 years. Uh, yep. I know they can last about 20, 25 years, but after 20 years, you're going to start seeing the, uh, the shingles start curling. Mm -hmm. That's, um, if, you're going on a uh, if you're going out to look at these houses, you want to look for the curling of the shingles mm -hmm. because it presents the likelihood of an ice dam. Right. Ice dams are very, very costly. And a couple of years ago. <laughs> two years <laughs> ago. What happened? I, I, I used to walk <laughs> in on Monday morning. I'd have like 19 voicemails because <laughs> ice dam, ice dam, ice right. dam. Um, and it can be very costly. Basically what they are is, you know, snow piles on top of the roof, but the attic, the hot air actually melts the snow. But there's still an ice there, so it creates almost like a dam. Right. And with those curling shingles, as soon as it breaks through, you're just going to have all the water flood right into right. your house. Uh, very costly and very damaged, you know, a lot of damage that can be impacted on the home. Yeah, no, I mean, it impacted what I did a couple of years ago, too. You know, people were like, oh, yeah, we're going to go, you know, put our house on the market, you know, talk to them, talk to them in January about the spring yeah. market, and then, you know, February happened, and we had to delay. Oh, yeah. And, you know, um, and it affected everyone. So, you know. Um, so it's good to have a good contractor, yeah. uh, you know, someone who you can have on your back. I know we both know You uh, know Brian. some good ones, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, which I'm trying to get him on the show too, but yeah. you know his <laughs> schedule's crazy. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. Is there anything? I, I think we covered everything we wanted to talk about. Can you think of anything you want to add? Um, no, I just I, I would just stress the importance of you know making sure that you do review your policies. Mm -hmm. Don't go the cheapest route. There's a reason why a company is right. cheap. Uh, you know, you get what you pay for. I was just going to say that. Pretty much with with insurance, uh, with pricing, um, you know, you either have customer service, claims, mm -hmm. or price. Uh, you can't have everything. Liberty does very close to it, um, but you can't have everything. So where you're giving up by getting a lower price, you're giving up somewhere else. So, yeah. Um, whether that be in a local agent or a claims experience, um, like I said, arguably this is the biggest investment you're going to make, so you want to make sure you protect it, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that might be to not go with the cheapest option. Yeah. No, I agree that, I mean, with anything, don't always, because yeah. you do get what you pay for, and, you know, you and I share stories all the time, and, you know, sometimes, you know, the wind hail deductible um, in the tree falling, that oh, just flabbergasts me that, oh, yeah, comical. you've got a $25,000 deductible. Yeah. And good luck. Yeah, good luck. Now you're paying fifteen thousand. Yeah. Because you know, so there are important questions to ask. So you know, if you know, my big takeaways uh, um, with you was really do your research. Yep. Make sure you and make sure you're working with a local agent. Mm -hmm. And cheap is not always better. Not always. Yeah. Um, yeah and then uh, two, when you're going out, um, when people go and view houses, mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned what do we look at. You know, the biggest things would be definitely the roof making sure it's not, you know, curling. I did say that. Um, coal wood burning stoves. Um, so basically what those are is it's like a pellet stove. Yep. Um, you want to make sure you clean and inspect those annually. Insurance companies are going to take that as a higher risk um, oh, just because if you don't clean it, it creates soot, right. likelihood of a fire. Uh, swimming pools uh, with diving boards. A lot of those times, you know, most of them, actually all of them have to have fences. Right. Uh, but what a lot of consumers don't know is, let's say, for example, not saying I did it, but when I was what? younger, <laughs> um, the little kids, they jump the fences and they all right. of a sudden, you know, they pull up, go in your pool and then run on to the next one. Um, if that were to happen, gone forbid, someone drowned, you as a homeowner, even though you had no idea about it, would be responsible for that. Mm -hmm. um, so all these things, all these factors should go and take into consideration with the house. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times when you're selling, when you're showing people houses, they fall in love with certain aspects. Right. Um, but they need to look at maybe like the, the big bigger picture, picture, which is why so it's great to have a realtor there. A pool it just made me think of a question. So you know. I've got a pool, I've got the fence around it, I don't have a diving board because yep. I know they're pretty much a no-no anyway now. Um, if I, you know, put in, a, you know, there's water sensors that you can put in the pool, does that help with your rate if you have a pool, if you take extra measures, so if that yeah, you know, we, pool we, hopper jumps in in the middle yeah. of the night? <laughs> yeah, there's a flat surcharge for having a pool. Okay. Um, we do require certain things. Um, with the in-ground pools, we do require it's been securely fenced in with a lock mm -hmm. gate. Um, with the above ground pools, we make sure that it's either enclosed and always has a lock gate. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there's, you know, like burglar alarms and stuff like that, there's no additional discount. Right. It's just a flat surcharge on your policy for okay. owning a pool. But obviously those extra things. Oh, yeah, it would help you as a homeowner. Help as a anyways. homeowner anyway in safety. Yeah. So, um, no, this has been great, Andrew. I always walk away with a tidbit when I have oh, a conversation right, you. with you about insurance. I mean, I probably know more about homeowner's insurance than I should because of our relationship, but, yep. um, you know, I always appreciate your help and, um, you know, so uh, thanks for being on the show. And no, I appreciate uh, it. Yeah. yeah. If anyone has much, have a great day. day. Thanks.